Hello, Daniels here. Welcome to the second Java E tutorial. As before, we're going to continue working on a servlets and JSP. And in particular, in this tutorial, we are going to create our first JSP page. So let's start by copying this Web1 project. I'm going to click copy here, and then I'm going to right click to paste it. I'm going to call the new project web2. Okay. There we go. Now we have an exact copy of the previous project. Only thing now is that we still have to go right click on it, go to properties and search web. And then in web, click on web project settings and change the context context root to web2. Why do we need to change it? If we don't change it, when our project is deployed, it's going to be deployed under localhost 8080 web1. And if it's deployed under web1, it's both confusing and it will conflict with this previous web1 project that is also deployed on web1. So if by changing this from web one to web two, we avoid this problem. And now our new project is going to be deployed on the web two URL. Let's click OK. OK, again, there we go. Now our project is going to be deployed properly and we can continue working. Here is our controller. OK. Here, let's let's go to web content. Let's open web content. Inside web content, let's open web INF. Here inside web INF, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. Let's call this folder views and click finish. Anything under web INF is protected from direct access by the browser. So in other words, we want the browser, if we go to web to views like this, it will not work or web INF views like this also will not work. Anything under web INF is indeed protected from direct access by the browser. And we want to put our views there so it won't be directly accessible by the browser, but our servlet will route to our views. Our servlet will forward to our views. So our views will only be accessible through the servlet, but will not be accessible directly. Now in the views folder, I'm going to right click, click new, other, and let's search for JSP. I'm going to create a JSP file. And we can call it anything we want, but I suppose add passenger. So we can call it add passenger.jsp. .jsp. Actually, I'm not, we don't need the extension, just .jsp. Add passenger is fine it will add the .jsp by itself. Next, um, yep, new JSP file HTML, that's fine. Let's see what other options we have. I think that's fine, finish. All right, it's creating our JSP file. <laughs> there we go. We have our JSP file right here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And in particular here, let's put what we had before, before we had an H2 tag and it says, welcome to world adventures airlines. And the title can be, for example, can be World Adventures Airlines. There we go. Now we have the same 
in content that we had before. And then we can go to our add passenger servlet and we don't need the, this information anymore because we're not going to write to our, to our view directly. We're not going to write to our HTTP response directly, but instead we're going to forward to a JSP and the JSP is going to be our HTTP response. This is going to be our HTML that we send to the browser. So we don't need this content anymore. We don't write to the response directly. Instead, we're going to forward to the JSP. So how are we going to forward to the JSP? We need a request dispatcher object. We ask the request, the request that came into the servlet, we ask, the request to give us a request dispatcher. The request is what the browser sent to the servlet. The browser sent the request to the servlet. The servlet in turn is asking for, from the request to get a request dispatcher. And in the and the argument to the request dispatcher is the JSP that we want to forward our request to. So I'm going to forward our request to web inf slash views, right? So we have web inf slash views slash add passenger dot JSP. There we go. Now probably we need to import the required dispatcher, but it's, let's import from Javax servlet. Now we, right, so in Javax servlet, there we go. Here is, uh, let's see what we have at Java. Here it is, here is the, here, is, here it is, here is our required dispatcher import. We import the package, so this class will be recognized without its fully qualified name. Now we import it. Okay, so we import the package, the class is recognized, and we have the view. The only other thing that we need to do after we told the request dispatcher where we where we want to forward the request. Now the only thing that we have to do is view, which is our request dispatcher, forward. And here we give and in the forward we give it our request and give it our response there is our response object the request that came from the browser and the response that's going to be sent back to the browser as the response to the request as the html the response is going to be forwarded to the jsp and the jsp is going to write the html to the response and the browser is going to get back the html from the that was written to the response by the JSP. Okay, so let's see this in action. So we have it started. Let's go to add remove. We can remove we can remove the web one project. Another way to remove it, one way that I've noticed that sometimes actually works better, is go to glass first management, deploy the applications and click undeploy. And let's add it. Let's now add web two. This is web two. Finish. Web two was added. And we can go to web two. Add passenger. Servlet. Oh, there we go. Now we still, as before, we got the welcome to world adventure airlines. There we go. So it worked not as it works as before, but now we are getting this from the JSP. To prove that we're actually getting it from the JSP, let's uh, let's also add this is a JSP. Let's republish. Right click on the glassfish and click publish. Hmm, actually. I'll We'll see. Okay, 
this is a GSP. There we go. Got republished. Now this is a GSP. There we go. All right. So uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully, you will join me in the next tutorial, and we're going to look more at at servlets and GSP.